moving towards plant-based, we really need to know how to make our dinner parties pop, even when you have a vegan or a vegetarian guest along. So I thought I would invite Sue, who is a vegan, and yep. Sue, you're also a vicar. I am indeed. So you're indeed a vegan vicar. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> So, first of all, I got you this lovely mocktail because I would like you to relax while you re um, cook for your friends and family. So, cheers. cheers. Now, Thank this is a little you. mocktail. It's now, um, when we are entertaining, mm. are you one of those chefs that drinks excessively and cries when your guests are just about to arrive because you've chosen something that you just weren't capable of doing? Now, this is public, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> well, let's be honest. Yes. <laughs> So guys, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a really quick and easy vegan Tower of Pleasure. Naughty but nice. Naughty I like but it. nice. So we'll drink to that. Yep. So obviously, when we're eating on a vegan diet or a veggie-based diet, it really does depend on what you can find at the markets or at the supermarkets. Um, one of the things that I have to show my vegan and vegetarian um, friends, foodie friends, is how to make your vegetables a little bit more sexy. There is nothing worse than going to a dinner party and it's a vegan or a vegetarian menu option and they've given you steamed veggies, yeah. the whole place. Yeah. Okay, so what I like to do, when we roast veggies, we get, I always say, we make them look 10 bucks more expensive. First of all, when you roast veggies, nice and swear word hot, in the oven, we get the flavor, we get the personality and we don't have to work as hard to do it. So we're going to use um, both the oven and the stove top to get our vegan tower of pleasure out. Now, if I didn't talk so much, this is a real quick dish to do. But I like to show you all my secrets. Please do. Okay. So first of all, this is a very large sweet potato. Yes. Um, this is usually sweet. when I say mine's bigger than yours. <laughs> <laughs> We've taken some of the sweet potato and I've diced it into a nice small dice. Now, when we're creating meals, what I like to do is I like to plan flavor. I'm all for flavor. I always say, season your food, it shows you care. There's nothing worse than arriving to us, like I said, steamed veggies with no seasoning. You're probably never gonna go back to that party. So roasting your veggies with beautiful flavor will also give them personality and color, all right? So what we're gonna do is I've got two beautiful uh, mushrooms here. I've got our sweet potato, which I've just diced. I'm gonna do a whole separate dish for you, a little bit of theater with this cauliflower in a minute, but we really do need to get these into the oven roasting. Now, how do you usually roast your vegetables? Uh, usually with olive oil and just a bit of garlic. Yeah, so we'll, do, we'll yep. do a little dirty drive-by of some olive oil. Yep. They're just, just a nice light shaking. I don't like to drench it because um, it does get oily later. Soggy. Yeah, soggy. Yeah. Right. So no one ever ordered soggy vegetables off a menu, and yet we are making them at home. So I would encourage you to maybe try my swear word hot and fast version. Yeah. What I've got, I've got the oven set to 230 degrees Celsius and these are literally going to go under the grill as well in the middle of the oven. This is if we need them in about six to eight minutes. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. so it's really quick. Of course, we could throw them in the air fryer, but I've got something special planned for that little air fryer today. Now, seasoning food. I've got a little bit of just normal sea salt yeah. and my tea strainer. This is what I call um, being chefy and living happily ever after in your kitchen is those little tricks that are gonna make you more efficient in the kitchen. So uh, just about a half a teaspoon of salt in there, and then we get an even dusting of salt snow. There we go. Have I changed your life? Yeah, <laughs> already, already. <laughs> now we're not gonna do too much more than that, but what I will grab is our culinary spray tan. So this is part of my, can you see it there? It's that one there, would you believe it? The, the last, last one. one. Yeah. yeah, so this is um, a bit of, culinary spray tan, which is also known as Raz al Hanou. It's a Moroccan um, or North African spice mix. It's got a beautiful amount of um, turmeric. And we were just talking yeah. that, is it turmeric, turmeric or is it turmeric? All right, turmeric. We, we will go either way today. That's I'm just, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we don't know. We don't know which way. Um, and also just to give it a bit of flavor and then straight into the oven they go. And then we're gonna do our next chefy task. So let's pop that in the oven. <laughs> In she goes. So like I said, we've got 230. If your oven will go higher, um, go higher. We've got that grill on as well. So what we're getting is maximum heat going into the veggies, and we're going to cook those really quickly. Now, you would have seen there, uh, Sue, what I did was 
I cut the veggies very small. So if yeah. you're in a hurry, if you're gonna do big chunks of veggies, well, that's gonna take ages. And also, we could do things like these beautiful purple carrots, uh, which can go in, and I'll, I'll add these in. They will roast down very quickly. And I always say, if it goes red, stop chopping immediately. Okay. <laughs> As if you yeah. cut your finger. Yeah. <laughs> All okay. right, nice and efficient. But can you see how chefy I look here, Sue? Oh, you do, yeah. I do, I look chefy. Yeah. Because can you see my knife is nice and sharp? Yeah. And can you see that my board is not moving around? Now, I know that I've Have just... Have you been watching me? In the yes. <laughs> Does your board move around? Mm. Okay, so when your board moves around, I always say you're going to say horrible things like, I hate cooking, mm -hmm. okay? But can you see I just had this little pretty wet cloth underneath and it stopped the board from moving. Ah, there we go. Yes. You see... I've just made you more efficient in the yeah. kitchen. So wet cloth down, board on top, and it's safer. It's so much safer when you're not worried about your little finger. So let me throw that in the oven, and then we will get started on our fancy sweet potato fries. And I'm about to show you how to make a happy yellow butter bean puree. Beautiful. Sounds good. So those veggies are in the oven. It is the perfect opportunity for us. Now, you don't have to do this, okay. but this is just going to be the crowning glory. And um, we were just talking about how quick, because those veggies are, have literally been in there for three minutes only, and they're already starting to get yeah. some nice brown color. And like I said, I've just given you 20 years of your natural life back yes. by teaching you how to get your veggies, not pale and soggy, but sexy. Yeah. Okay. Now, we've got some julienne of sweet potato now that sounds very intimidating and very chefy but with our lovely sweet potato have you ever seen one of these wonderful peelers before one, it's a crinkly one it's also known as a julienne peeler oh, okay and what we've got is that's a peeled sweet potato what we're going to do is just pull that literally through and it does everything for you okay now because they're so nice and small those are going to fry up really nice and of course you could do a uh, deep fry or a shallow fry um, but we're going to use our air fryer uh, for those and all we need and of course if you didn't have one of those you could just use your good old-fashioned normal peeler and you'll just get ribbons okay. okay so even though we've got sweet potato it's nice to have the sweet potato prepared in different ways because it shows then it shows your friends that you're much chefier than them like you're here and they're there because you know more ways with a sweet potato. And they're not okay. soggy. And they're not soggy. Yeah. All right, no one likes soggy. I'm going to dress it with a little bit of the um, extra virgin olive oil. You can use whatever oil you like. And I'm also just going to dust it in a little bit of that spice mix. Now, that's by Razal Hanou. Like I said, the culinary spray tan. But you could use a curry powder, a turmeric, um, just a bit of... Um, a cumin, anything you want really. So let's pop that into my trusty companion here. Now, we will need to give that a little shake just half the way through and um, make sure that they're not burning because they're very, very thin. So I've just got it on the fry function and let's start that up. So that's done. So just to recap, we're still not stressed, okay? No. This prep could be done in advance, okay, so you could have everything done before your guests get there, but it's all about the presentation. So cooking should be fun and relaxing, okay? Mm -hmm. And having dishes like this up your sleeve will make you much more, um, you'd probably have more dinner parties, okay? You'd probably have people around so you can show off your new culinary prowess. Now, have you ever seen a tin of beans before? Now, beans are really good for you, okay? They're also really good for the pocket. These are like budget beans, but we can pimp up our beans. Now, this is um, white, white beans or cannellini beans. Yeah. You could use chickpeas, or I also like to use butter beans. I usually buy what's on sale, okay? okay? Yeah. Uh, we've opened the tin, and I know you've done that before, so let's throw that away. And we've popped them into this pot here. Now, this is really quick. You don't have to cook it up. If you want to do this as a uh, dip, we can just put it in a food processor. It doesn't have to be heated up. But we're doing this as a main course, so we are going to just uh, cook it up. So we've got our tin of beans, and in my recipe, I've said two tins of beans, but it's just the yeah. two of us today, yeah. so we're going to go half. I've got this lovely bit of um, garlic in there. Now, of course, when we want to crush garlic, and I've just got a little garlic clove there, the quickest way to crush garlic is, of course, with a fork. All right, now, if you blink, you'll miss it, because that's how quick and easy it is to crush down garlic. Have I just saved you more time out of your... It's just, that's 
so much less messy than it yeah, and I hate the press because you can't get the guard. Anyway, let's not even go there. No. Um, then, on. because you're vegan, I'm going to use a coconut cream. Yeah. So this is a lovely coconut cream. By all means, you could use a coconut milk. And if you weren't vegan, you could use a dairy cream or milk. This is just to um, add a little bit of uh, moisture to that and, of course, flavor. Now, uh, this is quick and easy. Uh, we're going to add that. I'm going to put this on so, much, so we can just get it heated. Now, you can go as quickly as you want. Um, you don't really have to do anything else other than heat that up. And just to give the beans a little bit more personality, I'm going to add some of that matching spice mix because of the beautiful turmeric in here will color it and make everything look uh, more expensive. So are you any good at stirring, Chef yes. Sue? Yes. Oh, brilliant, yes. brilliant. Yes. Yes. Well, you stir that. Now, because you're so fabulous, I'm going to go big here, and I'm also throwing in a beautiful big pinch oh, of wonderful. saffron. Only the best for you, Sue. Oh, thank you, gorgeous. It's thank only the best for you. So, um, once we have our butter beans, or these are cannellini beans, all um, heated up, and literally, I could stop that right now, and it would be perfect, because we crushed that garlic, so there's not really a need for us to, uh, to cook that. Yeah. I'm going to hit that with a stick blender. Now, of course, you could leave your beans um, whole. You could crush it with the back of a fork and call them rustic beans, but we're going to put it in with that lovely stick blender and get it into a beautiful puree. Now, depending on what you want it for, if you wanted it to be part of what I'm doing today, which is a stack, we need yeah. it quite thick, but you could also thin it down and have it as a soup. Okay. So we could have that bean um, as a soup and we could just bling it up with all sorts of gl gl glorious things, uh, which I will show you in a minute. You see that's done. It does smell beautiful. It really does. So let us get that blending. So I'm just going to give you this. This is a, met, a lovely metal head, so we should be able to um, just stick that right in there. And it just takes five seconds of... Sorry about the noise. So, Sue, we blended that up, and I actually forgot to add seasoning. I was just about to make you taste, and then I realized that I had not added seasoning. Now, I like to throw in just, you know, like a beautiful quality stock cube. And I've got a mushroom stock here, um, which if you like mushrooms, is fabulous. And I literally use mushroom stock or powder as seasoning. So of course you could just use salt and pepper, but I put that in there and that's a lovely mushroom base. It's gonna have that lovely, just a bit more uh, personality to it. So we'll blend that, but isn't that looking already so much more interesting than a tin of beans, yeah. okay? Yeah. And we don't need to tell anyone that we went cheap. Okay, they don't have to know that we went cheap and that it was easy, all right? Also, Sue, I know we had this lovely zucchini here. This zucchini and things like snow peas, beans, broccolini, yeah. uh, broccoli, they don't really need much of a cook. And that's where I don't mind if they are steamed because the green veggies, they don't really benefit from a roast. You get them quite dry and quite um, sulfuric, but I chose that one because look how beautiful the ribbons are, and this will just be perfect for when we are plating up our dish. So those little um, sweet potatoes in the air fryer, I'm just going to pop these in just for a two or three minute cook, and they'll be part of our dish. Oh. So Sue, that took about eight to 10 minutes. And they've got beautiful color. The thing that I'm drooling over is that is going to be flavor. So we can actually see how tasty it is. Much better, much better, in my opinion, than um, the, the steamed stuff. So what I've got here is it's all about creating the perfect plate. Now, I know that sounds really chefy, but when your guests or your friends and family or whoever you're serving, even yourself, when you look upon your plate, you should have that moment of silence where it just took your breath away. Yeah. Has it ever happened to you with a plate of vegetables before? Not. Well, no, it's not often. It's, it's not always a first time. Terms. There's always a first time. So these on their own look very drab. I've got a little few uh, little snow peas. What I'm going to do is just pop some kettle water on those, yeah. literally for a minute, drain them, and they will keep their lovely vibrant colour. So let me go do that. So there's our boiling water over those. Literally, this is the best way to do them. We don't lose any of that vibrant color. If you boil these in a pot for 10 minutes, we can't be friends anymore because they are going to be drab. And you do not want people talking about your drab Thank peas God or beans. 
rather eat them raw if you're going to overcook them. So literally, that was just a little bit of time under that hot water. And we will strain those off. Now we are, now we are ready to create. So, into our lovely plate. Here's our butter bean um, or cannellini bean puree. Now that's a little bit thick for what we want. So instead of panicking, all I'm going to do is put a little bit of kettle hot water in there. And if you give that a nice chefy stir for me. Um, we've got our beautiful sweet potato fries and the zucchini ribbons. I'm just going to grab yeah. that. So now we're going to create. Now, do you have a stacking ring at home, Vicar Sue? I do not. You do not. This is not a problem. So I have a stacking ring because I have a cooking school and I use stacking rings all the time. So that's a little aluminium. Um, you can get, or you can get a stainless steel stacking ring. But yeah. if you have a beautiful plastic peanut butter jar, mm -hmm. we can make one for free. So if we grab a, we need scissors and a bread knife. If we just grab, and be careful here, you don't want to touch yourself. Sorry about the noise, but top and bottom off. If I just get my knife in there, generally I can take the rest off with my scissors and it's not as violent. Um, so literally top and bottom off. Now, of course you can get a bigger one, but this here is the perfect size for what we need. So it's all about being uh, thrifty. Yeah. Okay, so I know everyone would have either a peanut butter jar or a jam jar, as long as it's not glass, of course. We can't cut glass, but I'm going to cut that round. I'll use my scissors in a minute. See, yeah, I just got bored. I went for the quickest, quickest option. And now, of course, you can use this again and again. You don't have to cut one every time you cook. This could just go in the dishwasher. I always say if it doesn't go in the dishwasher, it should just go in the bin. But anyway, that's me. All right, so here it looks invisible, an invisible little collar. Um, with our plate, now when we are plating, that's obviously a yellow sauce. If we are dishing up sloppy sauces from yeah. one spot to the next, of course I could bring my, place clo my plate closer, but this is a great one to learn. We can use... I call it a transporter plate, just to transport our stuff. You see, that would have been on the plate. And then I get very stressed when I watch people getting stressed in the kitchen. Okay. So if you're wiping the side of your plate furiously to try and get that round of applause, this is going to save you a lot of time and stress in the kitchen. Um, it also looks very chefy, yes. okay, because I look quite organized. What we've got here is our happy yellow butter bean puree as a puddle on the plate. Now, because it's perfectly seasoned, it's a beautiful consistency, and you could make that smoother. If you put that in a Nutribullet or something like that, of course it would be smoother, but I don't mind this little rustic um, one here. So that's for you to take home. I'm gonna use my fancy uh, one over here. Now, in terms of the stacking, literally, we've got our veggies. They are bursting with flavor, bursting with personality. You could have any veggies. We have just used these because that's what I had today, but that's not to say that you can't um, do cauliflower or eggplant slices and everything, beetroot even, raw onto the, uh, the, yeah. the platter, and you would just roast them like we've roasted them here. We've just kept it nice and simple. And as you can see here, if we just squish one of these, that is eight minutes and it's cooked because we were clever yeah. and we cut them small, okay? So I like having something in there that's quite squishy. So either cauliflower or potato or sweet potato because when I do my chefy squishing, so we have to get this compacted. I'm going to, I don't want to under cater for you. I don't know how hungry you are. All right, so when we squish this down, we've got to make sure that it's totally filling the form there. And you'll be able to see that in your little plastic one. And the plastic one's actually nicer because it doesn't get hot like this one, okay? Um, so you can go as high as you want, but I think that is fine. If you had butter bean that was a little bit thicker, we could pop some of that in as well. But we've got these glorious mushrooms. Just happens to fit in there perfectly. All right. And this does not have to be um, freshly roast for camera vegetables. This could be, I have veggies in my fridge. What on earth am I going to do with them? How am I going to pimp up? my leftover veggies, and this could even be a potato salad. Yeah. yeah, so we could literally do anything in here. It doesn't have to be these glorious vegetables that we've roasted for you today. Leftovers, upcycling. Okay, so now for the big reveal. 
All right, so let's take a sip of our drinks. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you, Sue. All right, and we will do the big reveal. All right, so this could be done in advance, or you could do it for your guests, or they might even like to try this themselves. So just feeding it out there. Can you see I'm not stressing? Don't overthink it. Just pushing it out with the back of the spoon, and voila. Okay, now, wait, there's more. What we need to do is we have our beautiful sweet potato fries. We also have our zucchini strips. Now, if you wanted to, you could actually add a bit of color. This is like a little Band-Aid if you've got anything messy in there. But I just like that little color. And can you see, no adhesive is required. These beautiful vegetables will just stick on there. Look at those. It's all about not just the flavor, and we have paid special attention to the flavor of this meal. I want you to have a good time. We've got color in there, so that lovely green will pop, uh, pop it out, but we also need texture. So I always say if everything's soft, it's like old age home food, yes. and we are in our prime, Sue. We Absolutely. do not want old age home soggy vegetables with no personality, no flavor. I like to go for height because it just looks more expensive. <laughs> And I'm even going to throw one of those in there just for some color. Of course, your hands should be clean at all stages. We've got our snow peas, but I will use those in a minute. We've got that coconut cream, which I have got as a drizzle. Now, there's only one problem there. That's really thick coconut cream. All I'm going to do, instead of stressing, yep. is add a little bit of cold water and just get it to the right consistency. So don't stress. Remember, you're the boss, and we shouldn't be stressing about this. So can you see I'm just stirring it? Mm -hmm. You can always take control back, okay? Now, can you find us that lovely fragrant dukkha? It's a pistachio and razal honu dukkha, or dukkha. There we go. And what I'm doing is, can you, can you put cream in a spoon, because Sue? Can I put cream in a spoon? Can you do this so far? Uh, yes. Well. Most people can do that, and they think yeah. it's so chefy, but all I'm doing is a bit of um, cream in a spoon, and this is the coconut cream, and then a nice, elegant and dramatic swirl around the plate. All right, that gives it two colors, all right? So it's gonna look nice, and it's gonna look chefy. So we'll just put some of this, can you open that up, got little wet hands. And also what I've got is some micro herbs. So micro herbs, um, I've got a lemon balm here, but of course you could use anything, and of course if you don't have micro herbs, don't be jealous, um, you could just put, dill fronds are very nice on the top of there. Let me just grab some petals. Um, I like to put petals on. Petals. I do need petals. And then this is your beautiful vegan tower of pleasure. Now, that was not difficult to make. No. That was not expensive to make. No. Okay, if we work out how much it costs, it's literally going to be about two bucks a plate. Okay, so things are looking up for us, people. All right, so I think this would be good to serve on a meat-free Monday at your next dinner party or just for yourself. Who needs steak? Exactly, who needs steak? Yeah. There we go. So we've had a bit of a tidy up, Sue, because I wanted you to taste this and tell me what you thought. Now, we were just discussing and you said that you were surprised no, and excited. Flabbergasted. Flabbergasted, sorry, at how easy and yep. quick this was. Yep. So now the proof is in the tasting. All right, I'm going to put a little bit of the dukkha over. You don't have to, but that is just a little bit of crunch. And this is the crushed pistachios. I've got toasted sesame seeds in there. It's a little bit of um, crunch as well. So if you want to just dig in there and tell me what you think. I'm very mm -hmm. excited. It's true. Because <laughs> it's no good if it doesn't taste good. Very elegant, isn't don't it? Don't want the tower to fall. It won't. It's a very stable tower indeed. I've stuck that together with lots of sweet potato just for you. Now we did not make the cauliflower. Is that good? Mm. Oh, I'm so happy, Sue. <laughs> now we did not make the cauliflower, but I've got a separate video for that, and it's really easy. Okay, so this could be your second uh, dinner party inspiration for your vegan or vegetarian friends or family. Are you going to live happily ever after oh, now, Sue? Yeah, <laughs> I was Catholic, I'd be going to confession. There we go. <laughs>